Hey YouTube, today I want to share a video with you on a CNA slash PCA daily routine. So those of you who know that I am a RN with a BSN degree, I currently work on a med search oncology hospice unit. Well on my unit, sometimes when we are short of CNAs, PCAs, um, they have the nurses to take full responsibility of the patient. And with that being said, we do both RN duties as well as the patient care assistant duties for that day. To those that who have been following me know that I have a video that shows how I went from a CNA to a RN. And in that video, um, I talked about I was a CNA for a few years while I was in nursing school. So with this video, I just want to kind of educate the people who are interested in becoming a CNA or those of you who are looking forward to starting at a hospital. Um, what is it the duty? What are the duties that the nurses see? So, uh, my daughter is 14 years old. She's in high school now. She started the ninth grade. And at her school, she goes, she attends like a career school career technical school where you can choose between dental hygienist, um, <clears throat> physical therapy assistant, patient care assistant. They have welding, machining. They have all this kind of stuff that you can obtain a certification in one of those um, fields um, before leaving high school. So I think that's a great idea. But because they have the patient care assistant that they're offering, I wanted to make a video for any of the high school students that are out there that are probably watching my video who want to know, well, what what is a normal routine um, in the hospital for patient care assistants? Or if you've been a patient care assistant that worked at a nursing home, I'm sure the duties are pretty much the, sh the same, but I just want to shine light on shine light on how the routine goes um, in the hospital setting. So to begin with, let's um, say that the first thing we do is we find out which patients we have. You find out what patients you have and you create your report sheet or sometimes the secretary might have the report sheet um, laid out for you. And the report sheet basically has all the patient names and it might have some extra stuff. It might have on there whether the patient is... Um, We'll get into that. But it, it basically have all the patient names. So you take your report sheet and you go and find the PCA who had the patients last night and the night before or the morning before, whichever shift you're working. And so together, you two will go to the bed, to each room and go to the bed and y'all would discuss how can I take care of this patient? So as a PCA, you wanna know if the patient is um, a blood sugar check, where most diabetics are patients. So the patients that might have particular medications that can cause the glucose to, um, to elevate, um, those would be patients that are on um, sugar checks. Then we also, they inform each other if a patient has telly. Telly is um, basically a halter monitor that monitors the, monitors the patient's heart rhythm um, and it alerts the nurse um, when there's any abnormal rhythms. So if the patients have the tele, tele, tele monitoring on, their vitals are checked more frequently per shift as opposed to um, the patients that does not have it. They also would tell like the, um, the independence level of the patient. If the patient is a total care patient requiring um, total care, or if the patient is moderate assistant, or if they're independent self care. They will also um, determine based on the ability of the patient to care for themselves. They would if determine they if they need to take, give the patients a bed bath or assist them in the shower and whatever the case may be. So after the report is done, then the PCA proceeds to grab a vital sign machine and they go into each room and they check the patient vitals. Now I must say that when you check the patient vitals, some patients might have on a pink band, which will say limb alert. So those are arms that, um, if they have that on their arm, those are arms you want to stay away from. That can be an arm where a patient could have had um, a limb removed, well, a, a lump removed, a mastectomy, or if they have hemodialysis, they probably have a graft in their arm. So there are certain reasons as to why we wouldn't use that, those limbs, or they might have a blood clot. So if they have a limb alert, you want to use cautious and not use that extremity. So another thing you want to do is always report abnormal vital signs. Um, find out from your facility um, what got. Find what, out from your facility um, which 
ranges that they want you to report with the vital sign, the, well, the blood pressure, blood sugar, temperature, respirations. And please, please, please do count the patient's respirations. Um, and, and also the glucose monitoring. When you check the patient's glucose, always make sure you report those things to the to the um, nurse. All right, so after the vital signs are done, the next thing you wanna do is make sure patients have fresh water in the mornings. So you will give all the patients water if they're not on what we call NPO, means nothing by mouth. Some patients that are going for procedures, they're not allowed to have anything by mouth. So they'll pretty much have that on their NPO on their assignment sheet. And I mean, do not give these patients no ice water nor food. So after the water is passed, the vitals are done, the blood sugars are checked, then you wanna get into doing the AM care if you're working in the morning. So um, right before you get into that AM care, if, if you have some patients that are not able to feed themselves and the breakfast trays are there, please make sure that you assist the patients with their feeding. And if you're not able to do so, or if you have more than one patient to feed at a time, please inform your nurse so that, um, that she can, you know, y'all can work together and decide who would feed who so all patients are fed at a decent hour. Um, and, and also sometimes family might be at the bedside and they might even offer, as long as this patient is not at risk for aspirating, choking, then they probably will allow family to assist the patient with eating. So then you wanna make sure patients are getting their baths in the morning. Again, um, some patients probably will prefer a shower. Some patients are not able to get up. So that's when you would do a bed bath. So after all the baths, the showers, the feeding, the food and everything is done, this is roughly around okay, noon. Okay, so pretty much around noon, that's when it's time for you to go start taking your breaks and getting yourself together. So when you come back, those people that were reported to have telemonitor, um, the halter monitor that I told you that they wear to monitor their heart rate and rhythms. Um, those are the patients that you will check their vitals again uh, pr pretty much three times a shift. At my institution, the vitals are checked two times a shift in the morning and in the, in, in the evening, but patients that are on halter monitors, um, those are patients that their vitals will be checked three times a shift at seven o'clock, 11 o'clock, and around four o'clock. So once that's done, and also you would check the glucose checks again prior to the patient's eating. You wanna make sure that you get the number before the patient actually eat. But again, you definitely wanna make sure you follow your institution's protocol so, so that, that you're you doing it according to their guidelines. So after um, the, like I said, the afternoon vitals are done and the glucose are checked, and everybody at this point had their baths and everything, then some patients, depending on what kind of floor you work on, if you work on a surgical floor, they usually want patients to get up and start walking, early ambulation. That's the key to preventing blood clots. So they probably have you assisting with getting up and walking some patients, or if, the, if around noon you have some patients that are going home, then you want to help transport the patients downstairs if you do not utilize patient escort transporters at your facility. So then here we are, now we're getting close to um, four o'clock because I'm speaking of a 12 hour shift here. Um, so around four o'clock, that's usually when they start kind of wrapping things up. They do the last but not least final set of vitals, um, glucometer check, glucose checks, um, which is the blood sugar. So yeah, so since you're nearing the end of your shift, you tidying up the room. You also, if you have patients that have Foley bags, which Foley catheters, you wanna begin to drain those bags, record the output. Some patients are probably on strict intake and output that your nurse will inform you so that you're carefully monitoring or helping her to, or helping him to make sure that the numbers are recorded accurately, such as the amount of liquids that are being intaken within and how much is coming out, whether it's via a Foley catheter bag, whether the patient has saturated diapers, or if they ambulate and go into the bathroom and they're using a measuring device in the bathroom, always get your numbers together, collaborate with your nurse, and um, therefore the numbers can be documented appropriately. Um, so after that, then usually some facilities, they have housekeepers that will come in, take out the laundry out of the room. Yeah, so if, if, you're, if you have housekeepers that 
um, remove those linen bags and that's great. If not, then usually the patient care assistants will go around and grab all the linen bags out the room so that when the next shift come on, they starting off with a fresh, clean slate, you know. Okay, so um, and then after that, when the next on oncoming shift arrive, you definitely want to do the same thing that they that you did from the beginning. You want to meet together and then you once they find out what patients they have, you go into each room and therefore you complete the bedside report again. And, um, and also throughout your shift, um, at my institution, we do what's called hourly rounding where the PCA will probably round on the odd hours and the nurse will round on the even number hours. So at eight o'clock, the um, nurse will round and the in um, at nine o'clock the PCA will round. You're checking the four P's, oh, well actually it's five now, five P's, which is the pain. Hi Mr. Jones, how's your pain right now? Okay, I'll let your nurse know. Um, pottying, hi Mr. Jones, I'm in your room helping you. Um, would you like to go to the bathroom at the moment? Are you sure? I have the time. I can assist you to the bathroom position. Mr. Jones, it looks like you're a little uncomfortable. Can I get you comfortable? Can I put a pillow under your leg? Can I fluff the pillow on your head? Making sure that they're positioned, that they're comfortable. Um, possessions, making sure that um, the phone is near them, that they have their possessions near. And then the fifth one is pump. If the pump, if the you look at the, actually the RNs will work with the pumps, but if you look at the pump and see that it's not plugged in, you can actually plug it in just to avoid it beeping because that's pretty much the fifth P is the pump. We try to eliminate the pumps from beeping. So if you look at the pump and you notice that the bag of fluid is getting low, then you can let your nurse know, hey, Miss um, Nurse T, I noticed that in room 5402, the bag was getting low. Um, you might want to check that out, you know, and we would appreciate that. So that's why the PCA and the nurse should work together. They, you can really go far when you do that. But anyways, I hope I nailed down most of the things that I that we do um, as PCAs because, like I said, there are days on my unit when I'm when I have to be both the nurse and the PCA, or sometimes um, when we're short of PCAs, they'll use a nurse and have them to work as a PCA the whole day without doing any nursing work. They just do straight PCA work, and that's why I came up with this idea because I was actually assigned to be the PCA two days ago and I was actually going to make the video then and you know basically saying you know what I'm gonna go ahead and make a video on the routine since I had to work as the PCA since we were short of PCAs and I didn't mind baby <laughs> so but anyways I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up here so for those of you who know or just now um, getting on board don't forget subscribe to my channel um, I have more and more videos that I plan to make and as always if you have any suggestions I know there were a few people that suggested some videos from me trust me I did not forget they are coming soon and um, if you have any suggestions drop them down below or if you work in the hospital and I left something out and you want to share for the PCA slash CNAs please drop it below or if you just have any encouraging words for them drop it below but as always if you're rocking with your girl nurse t keep on rocking i'll see you in the next video bye